Hello again, friends. Uh, that's right, I'm making another video. People really liked the last one. Might as well do a second. What am I doing with my hands here? Okay, so. Recently, I turned 19 and I wound up um, having the opportunity to get these White Knights watercolors. Now, not all of them are in here now. Um, and this isn't really a review video, this is more of a just, like, my experience, how I've been trying them out. I think I only got them yesterday. Yeah, I only got them yesterday. But anyway, ignore all these half pans, these are mine. Well, they're all mine, but all the half pans are old, old. And um, these are the lovely White Knight watercolours. I'm going to be reviewing more the paint itself. Um, but I do want to just quickly mention, I'm not a fan of this palette and I will probably never use it. Um, it's very big, it's very clunky. I did try using it, as you can see, but it's massive. I can... Should I zoom out a bit? There we go. You can see my pajama pants. Um, so this is a standard, like... 18 half pan or 24 half pan my math is so bad so that's how big that is compared to all of this and if you um don't mind big palettes then yeah this is for you this this palette it it does the job um i just don't like big palettes like this i also don't like how this is very can you see it's dome shaped so that's why there's no watercolor up here because it all would fall down into here um I think that this section is good, but it can come out, which is also useful as you can see, I've got some gouache on here. Um, so this bit is useful, I might wind up using this, but plastic is kind of cheap, looks like it's going to stain real easy. Yeah, I can't say I'm a fan of the palette. The colours, on the other hand, I am a fan of, and uh, these are all of the colours that I don't really need in my basic palette. Okay, I should probably talk about why I got these. Um, I've been using um, I've been using these Holbein watercolors. This is what one of the tubes looks like for about mm, a little over a year, and they're great. I think I have a collection of about fourteen, and recently I got this swatch chart. And with the swatch chart comes a lot of the pigment information. And I've been learning about pigment and stuff like that. Um, and I found that uh, the majority of the paints I own aren't single pigment. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I should probably, I'd like to try out some single pigment paints. I'll get a couple more tubes. Now, tubes of Holbein Series A here in Australia runs at about $12 per tube. Uh, 15 mil tube um, and that's not uh, it's not terrible but a lot of their single pigment colors I found using these things um, are more in the F line and they wind up actually being more expensive than Daniel Smith and I can't afford Daniel Smith so I thought okay well what's an inexpensive vibrant artist quality because I like my I like my fancy paint not gonna lie single pigment paint that I can use to dry out. So, for all these lovely colours, I think I paid $60 maximum. This puppy was on sale, um, and like I said, it was my birthday, so I had a bit of extra money. Yeah, so these are all the colours that come in the 24 half pan set, of oh, 24 full pan, sorry, and some of them didn't come in that set. I got a couple of extra ones, so I think the extras I got was Turquoise Blue, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Lilac, and Quinacridone Rose. And I'm pretty sure there was another one. Lemon. That's one. Okay. These paints are amazing. I love them. They're gorgeous. I'm gonna have to zoom back in now. And they're all single pigment, and they work out to about 
$3.50 a half pan and $3.50 is a hell of a lot less expensive than $15 per tube. Um, I don't mind that I'm not getting as much paint because I still haven't gotten through barely any of the tubes. Like I said, this isn't really a first impressions or a review video. This is just a, this is what I got. Thought I'd talk about it. Get, in case anyone's curious, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. This is all the, um, the paints. I've written down their pigments. Uh, some of them I won't be using, some of them I will. I thought I'd just show you though some of the ones that I like the best and of course my camera isn't going to zoom out. I think the ones that I like the best are definitely the turquoise blue. Look at how bright that is. It's a lot brighter in person. I think, I think the camera is making it a bit dull. The violet is gorgeous. This quinacridone rose is to die for. And this raw sienna is my new favorite color. It's very similar to yellow ochre. That's the one thing I don't like about their yellow ochre. It isn't single pigment, which it usually, in my experience at least, is. But raw sienna is like yellow ochre, but a lot more transparent. And I do like my transparency. So yes, I will show you paints that I've put in my regular palette. So as you can see, I've pretty much replaced all of the paints that I was previously using. This is Holbein Opera Pink. Um, I still really like this color, so I just thought I'd leave it in. And I had room for it, so why not? Uh, okay, so... So I have here Lemon. Oh, yeah, I have Lemon. I have Cadmium Yellow Medium. I have Cadmium Red Light. I have Matter Lake Red Light. Is that what they called it? Yep. I have Ultramarine, Azure, Turquoise Blue because I love it, the Opera Pink, I've got Yellow Green, Quinacridone Rose, Violet, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and I can't say this word, I know that it was a Russian word. It was like Vor I, I I have no idea. I'll put it on the screen, I'll put it on the screen, how's that? So yes, and I'm really happy with all of them. I'm going to show you guys a speed paint in a minute of me actually using the colours. So yeah, these are absolutely fantastic and in case you didn't already like take from my tone or whatever, I highly recommend these paints. These are fantastic, they're great quality, they're, like I said, they're very very bright. I'd say the Cobalt Blue is the only one that's really a bit lacking, but then again, I'm not a fan of Cobalt, bleh, cobalt anyway. Uh, I'm super duper sorry if I was kind of awkward during this segment. So yes, I hope you guys enjoy the speed paint. Bye from real time, Jess, I suppose. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so this is the fifth or sixth time of me doing this voiceover and yep, yeah, I'm really sick of people interrupting me. But here we go. Um, I've edited the video now and I realize I wasn't very concise in the information I was giving literally a few seconds ago for you guys. Um, so now I'll give you a list of pros and cons, which is probably what I should have done if I had actually planned beforehand, but that's just not who I am. <laughs> um, okay, let's start with the cons, because who wouldn't want to start their day off with a nice big cup of negativity? So, cons, the palette. It's way too big, it's way too clunky, and I get that's because the paints are full pans, but really I feel they could have worked a little harder at making the design more space saving, but at the end of the day you can literally use a sheet of plastic as a palette, um, in fact I have done that. So it works as a palette, just not a very efficient one. Um, second con. They are full pants, so you're going to need a bigger palette to store a multitude of colours in. Now I don't mind that they're full pans, but I would have preferred a half pan version. I would have happily bought that one over the full pans. Um, to my knowledge, White Knights has come out with tube paints, but I haven't had any experience with those yet. But if I'm given the opportunity, I, I would definitely like to try them out. Um, another con is that these aren't sold in Australia, and I'm not sure how easy they get how easy they are to get in other countries. Um, I bought mine off Jackson's Art Supply. 
and I'll see if I can link them down below, but I'm not sure if there's like rules with putting links in your description. I'll have to check that. Um, but yeah, they're on Jackson's Art Supply. I think they're based in England. Um, so it took about two weeks for the palette to get here, but honestly, they were, they were really worth the wait. So now let's talk about the pros. These behave almost exactly like my Holbein watercolor. And I want to make clear, I'm not bashing Holbein. Uh, I love their paint and their company, but they are just too pricey for me right now. Um, which is a pro, you know, these, these new paints, these white knights paints are very, very cheap for artist grade watercolors. Uh, when I dipped my brush in the paint, even just a tiny bit, I got super strong pigment immediately, specifically with the violet. That color is just, oh, if I could, I would, I would eat it. It's so good. I would eat it. <laughs> So the colors are super bright and in your face, which I personally love. If you prefer more of a um, transparent or no, these aren't these aren't too opaque. They're a little bit opaque. They're not too opaque. But if you prefer like really light, airy watercolor, this maybe is not for you, but they can get watered down really easily. That's another thing. They water down really easily. They layer really well. They do pretty much everything that a watercolor is supposed to do and they do it really well which once again for the price point is just incredible like wow the majority of the paints are single pigment which is awesome because i found that single pigment paints make much less muddy mixes than multiple pigment um, and are overall just sort of easier to work with i'm not trying to be a watercolor elitist or anything that's just my personal experience um yeah i'm not Definitely not an elitist. I'm not even a professional, so don't listen to me. I just make videos on the internet. <laughs> uh, also, I just want to quickly mention the colors that I would recommend if you're on a budget and just need a basics palette and you may be going to grab these open stock because I know that when I was considering picking these up, I was considering just getting a, a basics palette. So for cool primaries, I recommend Cadmium Lemon, Madder Lake Red Light, I think that's what they call it, and Azure. Uh, for warm primaries, Cadmium Yellow Ma Medium, Cadmium Red Light, and Ultramarine. And yes, I'm including Cadmiums. I'm sorry, I know that some people don't like them because they're technically toxic colors. Um, for me, I'm sort of just working with what came in the set, but uh, totally understand if you want to try and find some... Um, alternatives I suppose uh, some of the earthy tones that I personally can't live without um, that I have to recommend is definitely raw sienna I think that thing's going to replace my yellow ochre I'm going to be mixing all my skin tones with that color from now on um, burnt sienna is also fantastic and burnt umber is really really great specifically if you like to paint trees or just really old looking books um, I also really recommend that black that I still cannot for the life of me pronounce. Uh, overall, I think these paints are fantastic and I predict they're about to become a staple in my collection. I highly recommend them to everyone, even if you're just starting out with watercolor. If you have the money, then yeah, these are worth every cent. The only thing I'll mention is that if you don't need a palette, if you already have one like I did, and it's if it's cheaper for you to buy open stock, go ahead. The plastic palette isn't much to write home about, to write home about but you know that's not really the point the paints are the point so if you have any questions about these paints that i forgot to cover or mention feel free to leave a comment i respond to all of the nice ones um feel free to do the youtube things like liking the video sharing the video telling your friends to watch the video and laughing at this really weird awkward girl um okay i hope you enjoyed thank you for watching bye